Let us just drop in a moment and sit in your comfortable position. <clears throat> Close your eyes. Start taking some deep, slow and long breaths. to move, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> your hands into Bhumis Pasva Mudra. So you're going to place the fingertips of your left hand to the floor and the palm of your right hand up towards the sky. Close your eyes and just allow yourself <coughs> to drop into this mudra, letting the left hand be your release valve and allowing what no longer serves you to leave you through your fingertips down to the earth. And then with your upturned right palm, I want you to receive the blessings as they come down from above for you from the sky. So we begin our practice with that awareness that we are both receiving and giving our vital energy. And we are open to receiving it as much as we are open to sharing it. So just letting ourselves settle into whatever space you want to inhabit this afternoon, space of serenity, peace, calm, compassion, letting go as we receive. Nice. And bring both hands back to the knees. Just turn the palms up. We're going to inhale, shrug the shoulders up to the ears. And through your mouth, exhale. And sigh it out. We want to relax the throat. Remember, we hold a lot of tension in the Shuri Chakra, simply from maybe holding back what you really want to say. So this is the time to learn how to express yourself and communicate and release your truth and say your truth and not be afraid to shine whatever is yours to shine. Okay, so let's do that again. Inhale, lift the shoulders. And then out through the mouth, exhaling. And again, inhale and out, exhale, <sighs> good, take the hands and just shake them, shake the hands, bring the arms up, I don't know about you but I did a lot of driving today so I need to move a little bit, so just shake the hands, get your energy moving, bring it down, hands to the shoulders, let's do a little twisting, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then just come back to the center, bring the hands down, let the palms face up, take five breaths here. Just drop in with the awareness to the breath. Nice. Bring 
the hands to your heart. Just check in with Anahat Chakra. How are you feeling today? So part of our transitional journey, transformation, is to constantly check in with yourself daily. That's self-care where we acknowledge how we're feeling, where it's coming from, and what we're actually going to do about it. So one of the many tools that I use and are available for everyone on their journeys are crystals. And um, I love crystals. They are such beautiful, powerful little energy beings. And um, they can bring a lot of healing and upliftment into our lives. So I just wanted to share. I have this little tray that I keep some of my crystals on by my altar and I just have them in a particular pattern um, and they are aligned according to the chakras. So I don't know if you use crystals, if you think about it, um, if you have them already, you can just follow along with what I have. And maybe if you don't use them, you can think about getting a few to use in your practice, especially to help with the clearing of some of those energies and to help you stabilize and strengthen your inner self as well. Okay, so here we go. From the root, I have at the base here a piece of black obsidian. Ooh. This actually was what they used to kill the White Walkers if you watched Game of Thrones at all. Um, there were these White Walkers in it. And this is what they used to kill the White Walkers. As a stone, it is an extremely powerful, protective stone. And it literally does dredge up the skeletons that need to be broken into pieces from you. Whatever's been lurking in your deep, darkest shadows, your shadow self. Um, you know, the, the traumas, the pains, the hurts that you don't want to face yet or are not... Um, ready to when you are ready and you feel you want to do your deepest work and really clean out your inner closets i suggest maybe getting a piece of black obsidian it is just the most powerful protective but honest stone it will make you acknowledge your truth it will make you see some truths but it will help you smash them whatever obstacles whatever um, troubles you have it will help see you through them look it up wonderful stone black obsidian as I have representing in the root to really break up all those lower energies that keep us stuck right at the bottom okay coming from our deepest fears and traumas so for the root chakra as well I have some carnelian and some red jasper so again helping to connect us to the root and to clear some of the energies that are there and help to strengthen the chakra and bring it more into alignment. And if you're meditating with these stones, you can either just hold them if you're focused on a particular chakra or you can lie down and place them on the chakra points in your body and that way you will receive their energies in meditation. Um, so sacral chakra, I have some carnelian. Then we, in the, and of course the sacral chakra along with the root holes most of our stuff, a lot of our stuff um, in those lower two chakras, especially with regards to sexuality. And we know that's a big one for most of us trying to come to terms with, heal from um, whatever it is that you're struggling with and that impacts our ability to create and be free in our lives. So for abdominal chakra, I'm actually wearing it here in my crystal mala as well, is citrine beautiful stone for abundance, for bringing joy, happiness, light into your life, um, the money stone, citrine. So use that for your root chakra and to balance your ego, your lower self, okay? Coming into the heart, I have a nice little rose quartz and green aventurine stone, um, both either one you can use, rose quartz, really powerful for healing the heart center and for bringing deep unconditional love to yourself simply meditating and just hold the stone and you can feel the beautiful pink energies that come in with rose quartz very beautiful stone one of my favorites for the throat again the shudi chakra the center of communication wow how blocked does that get and especially as women 
So you need to find your voice. If you haven't really found your authentic voice and um, who you are, Blue Lace Agate will help. And if you feel that you're really bound by those old patriarchal rules um, of, you know, being a different person than you are to accommodate some form of being that was used to be prescribed, you may not even be speaking from your own self. So really breaking free of any limiting belief that says you need to stifle your voice or not speak your truth. And this is Blue Lace Agate, beautiful stone. You can meditate, just place it on the throat. This will help to open up the Shui Chakra and help with your ability to express yourself, speak truth, speak the truth, communicate, and move into those higher subtle energies. Um, going into the third eye, amethyst, always love my amethyst stones. What a beautiful, powerful stone for healing, transmuting, transforming energies into their highest. This is a very spiritually elevated stone. It connects us to our most subtle bodies. It draws us up into the ethers and it connects us to bliss and divinity. Crown, I have a beautiful clear quartz point. Um, that was given to me some years ago. I absolutely love it. Clear quartz, one of the most powerful amplifying stones for positive energy, for transmitting energy, for receiving energy, for clearing energy, for just elevating you into your higher self and for healing. So it's amethyst for healing. So sometimes just holding clear quartz can be extremely empowering. If you need to um, deal with something difficult or challenging situation, hold on to a piece of clear quartz, you will feel so empowered. At the base too, I also have smoky quartz. Smoky quartz is um, another piece of quartz, but really wonderful for absorbing negative energy, clearing it from you, from your space around you and protecting you. So if you deal with difficult people or you find yourself in a lot of negative situations, Maybe get a piece of jewelry or something with smoky quartz in it and it will help to keep your energies balanced and um, not taking on other people's stuff, okay? These two, I just wanted to show, I actually got these off the ground in India when I was there um, in 2008 with Swamiji and there were crystals all over the floor. We were in the country and this was, so these are two of my most treasured <laughs> crystals that I just picked up off the ground in India. So they're very special to me and have a very powerful energy themselves. There we go. So just a very quick, brief little crystals and how you can use them to help you balance and align your chakras, okay? So maybe you took a few little notes. If you didn't, you can always just shout to me and ask a couple other ones i wanted to mention this is angelite really love angelite this is atlantis stone so it connects us to the energy of atlantis and this is lepidolite which is said to connect us to the energy of lemuria which were the two ancient civilizations of light people from which all of this has descended so we connect to um ancient ones and past energies through crystals so you can always leave me a message let me know what you thought if that helped you a lot or helped you at all um maybe if it inspired you to buy some crystals if you are already using crystals um let me know what you thought okay that's nice so again let us sit in your position bring your hands to your knees and here bring the chest forward and let's do a few circles to the right just releasing the spine inhale forward and exhale back three exhale four exhale five exhale Come back to the front <clears throat> and going to the left for one, two, really deepen your breath here, three, four, and five. And coming back to the center. So go ahead and lie down. Let's do a little 
yoga nidra, a little relaxation. So lie in Shavasana. And imagine that you are placing each of those crystals over the location of the chakra. So at the root you can place maybe black obsidian or red jasper. And you can invite the energies of those crystals in your mind. Remember crystals are energetic beings. And you just invite the energies to start to clear anything that may be blocking your ascension, your movement into your most empowered self. So don't be afraid to be bold. Don't be afraid to ask to be shown these deep hidden aspects of ourselves. These are the things that hold us back. These are the fears, the thoughts and the judgments and the beliefs that keep us locked into our limited selves. So I want you to imagine that piece of black obsidian simply drawing to it whatever you fear most, whatever lurks in the deepest recesses of your own shadow. And just allow that energy to flow out of you. So imagine you're shining a huge light and you are walking with that crystal as your power. That black obsidian, the piece that I have looks like a little dagger. And with it, we are fearless to face the inner demons, the inner stalkers, the inner traumas that lie buried in our subconscious minds. So I want you to invite the release of those energies no longer serving you. So through all time, space, reality, and dimension, you free yourself from them and let go. Lum. 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 Imagine a piece of orange carnelian at Swadishtan <clears throat> in the sacrum. That orange color illuminating and brightening. You're visualizing an orange river of water flowing through your sacrum. Clearing any and all obstacles to your creativity, to your sexuality, to your expression of your true authentic self. Release the samskaras, all the impressions that lie lodged in your sacrum, in your pelvis, in your lower back. Imagine that red orange, sorry, that orange Up to your navel, 
as we go to Manipur Chakra. Imagine placing a beautiful citrine crystal on top of your navel. And you feel the warm glow of that crystal, the abundance crystal, bringing to you a flow of energy, strength, willpower, dynamism, courage, self-confidence. So allowing that crystal to free you of any self-doubt, lack of self-worth, increase your self-esteem, your self-confidence, your self-worth, how much you value yourself. Feel dynamism, you are glowing from your navel. City of Jewels is the name of Manipur Chakra. See that golden citrine crystal radiating out of your belly, drawing to you abundance on every level, that warm inner feeling. Ram. a beautiful pink heart crystal you can also use something green if you prefer green aventurine and just see that crystal in your heart center and feel the love that comes from your rose quartz or the green aventurine I want you to feel that love for yourself unconditional self-love just feel it flowing into your heart healing the traumas of the heart and there's so many starting from such a young age so I really want you to connect to your inner child here about maybe a time in your life where as a child you felt that you were not loved or heard or seen or cherished and I want you now as your adult self to simply go there and give yourself whatever it is that you lacked at that point and just love yourself love that little inner child invite him or her to come onto your lap and just give them big hugs and lots of kisses and just give them whatever it is that you need. This is how we heal those deep childhood wounds and traumas. So go there. Don't be afraid and just go and love your inner child. Yum. from within you. 
So now we flow up into ether, the lightness of the throat chakra, the shuri. And you can visualize that blue lace agate crystal. It's gorgeous, light blue like the sky. Coming to help you unblock and open the shuri chakra. Helping you to release your voice. To speak your truth. And to be your authentic self. So I want you to imagine that that stone is unlocking the doorway of your throat. And I want you to feel if there's anything down inside of you that has been suppressed that needs expression. And I want you in your mind's eye to actually feel it coming from wherever it's been stored rising up through you and in your mind screaming as loud as you can another time we're going to do this practice actually screaming but today you're just going to scream in your mind from your belly as loud as you can and you're just going to free your voice let's do it in the mind first so go ahead take a deep breath in feel it coming from wherever it's been hidden locked away, suppressed, ignored, not heard, and let it out. Good. I hope you actually did it and felt that mental release. We're starting that process of opening, and if you just do it mentally, psychically first, then we can move to the physical expression of that release. So feel your throat starting to open. You're seeing the color blue there. Feeling as light as ether. Hum. of your throat feel confidence coming from your abdomen love coming from your heart and your voice opening to be released with you your authentic self carrying it up now let's make it lighter still we're going into agya chakra in the third eye so here Visualizing the color purple, you can imagine that amethyst crystal sitting between your eyebrows. You can feel that powerful energy vibrating in your third eye, transmitting through that psychic passageway to your pineal gland in the center of your brain. Try and visualize that little white gland. That is your doorway to higher perception, intuition. Imagine you're breathing in from between your eyebrows all the way through to the middle of your brain and then exhaling back out. You can feel the power of the crystal coming into your third eye as you inhale, clearing that inner space, bringing mental clarity and as you exhale, freeing yourself from all of those anxieties, nervousness, fears, confusion, doubt. Just clearing the space with the aid of that beautiful amethyst crystal as it lends its vibrations to your mental healing. So breathe in light, breathe in clarity, breathe in intuition, Breathe in inspiration and just breathe out what does not serve you. 
Feeling the powerful vibrations, settling the mind, expanding the mind, focusing the mind, calming the mind. And at the crown of your head, see a brilliant clear quartz crystal sitting on top of your head and receiving divine light energy from the heavens, from the universe, from Shiva. At the crown, we receive our highest consciousness. See it pouring down into that crystal. See that crystal transmitting it to the rest of your body as it flows through your third eye, down to the shuddhi in the throat, down to Anahat in the heart, down to Manipur in the navel, down to Swadishtan in the sacrum, down to Muladha at the base. Then go back up with the mantras Lam, Vam, Ram, Yam, Ham, Om. Purnamedam Purnata Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Om Bhur Bhuvasvaha Tat Savitur Varenyam Bargo Devasya Dimahi Dio Yona Prachodayat Om Shanti 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 May you be filled with the light of the universe. May you be filled with the love of the universe. May you be in service to that light and love. May we each embody light and love. May we all contribute to a world of light and love. Feel those intentions. Share them through your heart. Place your own intention in your heart center and say it three times. Gently start to bring your awareness back to your physical body. You can move your hands and your feet. Be gentle with yourself. Hmm. Stretching your arms up. Gently roll onto your side. Just cradle yourself there. Appreciating yourself, your inner child. This little fetal position brings us right back to childhood. And then come up to sit in your cross-legged position with me. Bring your hands 
into union, the fingertips in your lap. Just join your two hemispheres of your brain here. Let us close our practice with a couple of minutes of deep inner silence, cherishing the inner balance, that inner union, the inner Tantra. And just sit and share and radiate that energy of love and light for all beings. We give thanks to the Divine Mother, the Divine Feminine, and the Divine Masculine as they come into a sovereign union, supreme inner balance, total harmony, bringing us face to face with our own divinity and our humanity. As we love, embrace, purify, and heal one, we can step into and embody the other. No judgments anymore, folks. We are all in this together. We are all healing from our past. We are all wounded. We are all seeking peace. We are all seeking happiness. We are all seeking unity. We are all seeking to be at one with ourselves and each other. That is what each one of us is seeking desperately. The world is seeking this. So remember, your practice allows you and me to embody this, to really become a love warrior, a light leader, a champion for this new earth that we are co-creating. Bring your hands together to your heart center in Anjali Mudra. Bring it into your heart, really cherish who you are for showing up, who you are for embodying yoga, for bringing it into your life, into the lives of those around you, for choosing to continue to walk even when it becomes hard and challenging. I salute you. And I thank you for joining me on this journey, for helping me on this journey to be a better person so that I can serve you more with whatever it is I'm learning. And I am still learning, always will be. Humbly grateful to call myself a student of my Guruji and always, always humbly accepting the teachings as they come and putting them into practice. So let us joyfully close our practice here, sharing our intention for peace with all of humanity, closing with one chant of Om. So inhale. so much everyone for being here this afternoon sharing the practice remember even though I can't see your face I know that you're there and I feel the energy coming through as we share the practices together you inspire me thank you for being there and for your continued support let us continue to join together to band together to create new communities inspired communities and really take up this challenge to be love warriors light leaders and co-creators of our blessed new earth.